Alright, three, two, one. Yo, what's up everybody? This your boy Lemon Versus, or you can just call me Derek Smith. And finally we're back with the Independent Artist Podcast. I know it's been a while. It's been a hell of a minute. I've been gone for a minute. Man, but you know what? We're gonna um, talk about that real quick. Uh, and get that out of the way. Um, so why I stop? Uh first of all, it was it was first it was supposed to be just like a slowdown thing because what happened was because the recording situation changed. Um I talked about this in the past it was one of the main reasons why I chose a night job was uh, was because in the daytime pretty much everybody was gone and I would had a house to myself and it's easier for me to record without other people moving around in the background and just walking and just doing shit like that. And so that made things so much more easier for me. So, but then that situation changed. Whereas, um, I guess you can say like, I want to say summer. So that means my son was home and he usually goes spend time with his sister and mom, go hang out with them. He didn't this year. He I think he stayed home and did like band camp. I know <laughs> every time I say band camp, I think about that movie but anyway. But yeah, so some things changed. There was more people at home during the daytime and it kind of threw me off a little bit you know and then there's some family things too where like um i don't want to say babysitting i don't call it i don't like to call it babysitting when it's your family it's more like um i was hanging out with grandkids you know there's a period where um the grandson he comes over and with him running throughout the house and stomping and stuff and calling me papa pop you know so things like that that change so um and honestly i guess i was just using that as an excuse plain and simple long story short i was just using all of that shit as an excuse and then uh you know it it then so so after that um there's an update where fl came out and for some reason that was that was harder than usual for me to like update it and do everything that I normally do is that like that mainly because of the um I had uh, like I guess you can say I don't want to say modified but customized uh, my um, FL studio to pretty much my personality and my needs and so just and when I updated it just switched over to a uh, like a basic and it threw me off for like a couple of weeks it was hard for me to switch over on uh, like move my templates from the uh, uh from the um from the old update to the new updated folder i forgot where i had put all that stuff at and even then it's not quite right but it's close enough it's just i just gotta make sure I remember that my mic is on whenever i turn my fl studio but um uh, which like I said, the update is that's just another subject matter, which is cool. Um, which is kind of, it's cool and weird because the update it almost forces me to go back to what I was used to before I started using FL Studio as far as how they do they um what is it? The um the audio the audio files and stuff as far as like um stretching it over the bars and not stretching the audio itself, if that makes sense. To some of you guys, it should. If you got, if not, then you're probably listening to the wrong podcast. But anyway, so and then after that, there was a death in my family that really took it out of me. Um, had to um fly out to Mississippi. Um, if you saw the post when uh, I had made like this little video of me on the plane coming back to Cali. And you know the song I'm going, going back, back to Cali, Cali. Either that one or I can't remember. I think it was the biggie one. Yeah, yeah, it was biggie. It was biggie. I'm going back to California. Anyway. So um let me see. But yeah, that's pretty much it, you know. Um after the death of a family member, it was uh I originally told myself I was going to hit the ground running when I got back, but boy, boy, was I wrong. Was, you know, I had some other issues to deal with because 
getting out there was a bitch and financially it was hard for me and so I kind of had to make some what kind of some accounting moves to be able to afford a ticket and then when I got back I had to deal with that shit so yeah but I'm good um uh, over back I got everything back and rolling basically um you about to start this all over again so another thing that happened was so I was recording my podcast on Anchor, and I think Anchor actually sold their company to like Spotify fully or some shit like that. I don't know what happened, but like all of my shit just like deleted. They deleted all 10, 12 of my episodes or whatever, however many I had. I mean, I get it. It's not like I had like a million followers or anything like that, so... We're back. We're starting all over again. But you know what? I don't care. You knock me down. I just get back up. Anyway, so that's it. That's pretty much the gist of it. What happened? Um. Um. But other than that, yeah, that's it. When we get back, we're gonna talk about hip hop being fifty years old. Fifty. God damn. Fifty years old. I'm forty two. So that means. Hip hop is only eight years older than me. That's that's crazy. Anyway, we'll be right back. Yo, what's up, everybody? We're back, and we're gonna talk about the history of hip hop. I actually found this article on, I think this website is called discogs.com. Um, I haven't found a, um, an author yet, but the it's D-I-S-C-O-G-S dot com slash music slash hip hop. All right. So if you guys want to check that website, it's actually a pretty good website. If you like um, websites like um, Hip Hop DX and, um, you know, things like that, you can probably find some good stuff in here. They even look like there's a section for audio gear. The title of this article is called 50 Years of Hip Hop, A History of Genres Evolution. As hip hop celebrates its 50th anniversary, explore the genre's evolution through these 50 essential albums. Hip hop was born in the summer of 1973 at a block party in New York City, Bronx, when DJ Cool Herc extended the beat of a recording using two turntables and a mixer to fade between them, then started emceeing as the music continued. His techniques came to be known as scratching and rapping, two of the key elements in hip hop in hip hop music. It would be another six years before the first hip hop song was recorded and released. Let me just pause right there for real quick. I actually found out that um actually hold up, let me let me keep going. Uh it would be another six years before a hip hop song was recorded and released, introducing the, the genre to a wider audience and gaining pop popularity in the mainstream by the nineteen eighties. And hip hop had expanded to New York and could be heard on the airways and in the clubs in cities such as Los Angeles, Atlanta, Toronto, St. Louis, and New Orleans. Now, real quick, going back to the set, the first hip hop song was uh, introduced. Now, we all know that's alluding to um, Rapper's Delight. But, however, I found out not too long ago, well, yeah, a few. Maybe a couple of months ago, that there was another song before that. It just that rapper's delight was the first song that was like published and like available to the masses and stuff like that. Rapper's delight was the first one. It was like the first song on the airway. So that's probably what they mean by recorded and released. See, so uh, that's the key word in that. But anyway, by 1989, mind you, I was born in '81, so. By 1989, hip hop had established itself as a mainstay in popular music. That year, the Grammys introduced a new category, Best Rap Performance, although nominees LL Cool J, Salt and Pepper, and Will Smith, who had won awards alongside DJ Jazzy Jeff for parents just don't understand, boycotted the ceremony as the awards presentation was not televised. So already is. There, there's some pushback in hip hop right there. Now, mind you, I can see, I can kind of see why they did this because I do remember um, watching this stuff like that, and 
what they would do is when they come back for a commercial break, uh, like certain categories, I, I want to say kind of like the lesser important ones that they would just be like, this person uh, going for this, this, and this, and this, and that, you know, and they won't have the whole thing where they have them come up on stage and all that stuff. And being that hip hop was a new category, I can kind of see why. But then again, hip hop was this huge explosion that that make you wonder, like, why, why, why would you though? Yes, it's it's a new thing, it's a new phenomenon, but still, though, would you want to take advantage of that? Well, I mean, not like advantage, but because we all know they're gonna do that. But anyway. It goes on to say, it goes on to say, in the years that follow hip hop continuously, in the years that follow hip hop continuously reinventing itself as rappers, DJs, and producers pushed the boundaries of the genre and took its popularity to new heights as hip hop celebrates its 50th anniversary. Explore its evolution through 10 years and 50 fundamental albums that contribute to the genre's impact on pop coach and see that's what i want to go through because it seemed like a good article but here's the thing that gets me the 50 fundamental albums that contribute and i want to know whose input on these um fundamental albums that contribute to the germans hemp uh to the impact on the pop culture because I hope this is not one of those times where it's somebody who rarely knows anything about hip hop. But like I said, on the surface, it seems pretty good. And when I skim through it, it looks pretty decent, you know? The first era of hip hop, the old school. Let me see. Okay, yeah. The first era of hip hop. Okay, so the old school, from 1979 to 1983. And quote, when it came out, nothing was the same afterwards. End quote. Journalist Harry Allen on Rapper's Delight NPR. Okay. Now, throughout the late 1970s and early 80s, artists and DJs solidified hip-hop's major elements, rapping, beatbox, scratching, and sampling, and refined their techniques as advances in recording technology made sampling easier. The old-school hip-hop era represented a, a lot of firsts for the genre. Sugar Hill Gang's Rapper's Delight is recognized as the first hip hop record and was the and was the first hip hop recording album to gain widespread widespread popularity. The song which samples Chick's Good Time became a top forty hit in the US and saw even more success internationally charted in the UK and Canada. The embodiment of old school hip hop, the track served as the front as as the sort of prototype for future rap releases. <clears throat> Let me pause there. You notice it said, and this is was was, was recognized as the first hip hop song and went into the top forty. It sampled the song Good Times. So and now today, fast forward today, yeah, like sampling is like the worst thing ever you can do in a hip hop song. But hey, what do I know? It's not like I've been listening to hip hop literary damn near since its creation. But anyway, anyway, it goes on to say most hip hop, most I'm sorry, most old school hip hop was characterized by its funk and disco influence, simplistic rapping techniques, and light party centric lyrics. However, exceptions like Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, the message showed that hip hop was also capable of delivering social commentary. By the mid-1980s, artists began to draw inspiration from other musical styles, including electronic and rock music. Africa bombarded Planet Rocks with, with samples, Kraftwerk's Trans Europe Express, and numbers signal a shift towards diversification and experimentation within hip-hop.